red light therapy has an enemy and it's called sunlight. Now I recently did a video where we were talking about red light therapy versus sunlight and I didn't think I was going to make another one on it but there's one comment that was made on the latest video that hit the nail on the head so well that you're going to want to see it too. So in this video I'm going to talk about why sunlight is the enemy of red light therapy and then we're going to cover this comment so you can see how well it's been explained by someone on this channel. So why would sunlight be the enemy of red light therapy? On this channel, every now and again, I get a comment from someone when I'm talking about red light therapy and they will say sunlight is free or just go outside. Now the reason for this argument, which seems to make sense in the beginning, is that sunlight has the other wavelengths. So it's got the same wavelengths as red light therapy and then it's got added ones. It's got blue light, it's got UV light, it's full spectrum. So the argument is that you could just go outside and that would be your red light therapy done. The problem is it completely ignores the principle of how red light therapy works. So red light therapy focuses on very specific wavelengths, the ones that we know stimulate your mitochondria. And yes, you can get them from sunlight, but in order to do that, you would need to spend a lot more time outside. It's kind of like you could get your daily protein intake by eating lettuce, but you would have to eat 100 heads of lettuce in order to hit that target. So sunlight could definitely replace red light therapy, provided you could spend enough time outside. For most of us, that's not really a viable option. Now I want to jump into this comment because it is absolutely gold. So the comment came from a username of Go Influence Yourself. I love the name. Don't just let everyone else tell you what to think. Don't let me tell you what to think. And I'm going to break it down into two parts. But the first one, it says, living exactly like our ancestors is the peak of performance. Any bit of modernity you add to your life is a net negative. Anytime indoors, in front of a TV, near Wi-Fi, near radio waves, unavoidable in the world, any modern food or water, all of these are detrimental to health. So think about that. If we're using how our ancestors lived as a compass, which I think is a very good compass for your health and your performance, they were living under sunlight. Now we spend too much time inside, that's a net negative, it brings us down. We spend time under artificial light, too much blue light, that's another net negative, that brings us down. So in order to bring yourself back up to that optimal level, you can't just spend an hour outside and then spend the rest of your day inside under artificial light and think that you're using your ancestors as a compass. There's another great way that illustrates this. You may know about someone called Jack Cruz, and him and many of his followers will use orange tinted glasses when they are outside in sunlight. Now these glasses are meant to be blue blockers. So most people will use them and think, okay, when I'm in front of my computer, I want to block the light. Anytime after sunset, I don't want to allow any blue light in through my eyes. That's gonna help me with my sleep. Jack and his followers have taken it a step further they're saying that when you're inside and you're getting a ton of artificial light, in order to balance that out, because there's so much blue light there, we need to megadose ourselves with red light. So they will go outside with blue blocker glasses on, get natural sunlight in through their eyes, but then they're blocking out the blue. So they're essentially doing red light therapy for their eyes. And this can literally be summed up into one sentence. Modern problems call for modern solutions. Red light therapy is the tool that answers the problem of spending too much time inside and being exposed to too much blue light from artificial sources. So I just want to close with the second part of this comment because it's also reiterating this point. I am generally against anything artificial, but artificial living may require artificial therapies like red light therapy as a balancing point. So when it comes to the spectrum of your light diet, if you can spend only time outside, you don't spend any time inside under artificial light, then perfect, you're right in the middle. But everything you do that takes you away from that optimal point, spending too much time inside, being exposed to artificial light, watching this video, you need to do something in order to supplement it back to the center. Now you can't just use the center mark in order to bring it that way, you need to overshoot it onto the other side. So red light therapy hyper exposes you to the red and near infrared light, so that somewhere in the middle, you will sit at the optimum point. If you are interested in using red light therapy for sleep, I did a very exciting video recently 
where I worked one-on-one -on -one with someone called Sid. And I'll link to that video up over here, but we tracked his sleep for two weeks using the MyLight Max. If you go and check that out, you can see our calls and find out what results he got.